a spectacular defense. That's how one U.S. official described Israel's defeat of Iran's massive drone and missile attack. The IDF and its international partners successfully shot down 99% of the incoming missiles. Well, the question now is, will Israel strike back? Or will allies like the United States succeed in preventing retaliatory action? Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem. In its first direct strike by Iran against Israel, Iran attacked with more than 300 drones, crews and ballistic missiles. It brought a 45-year shadow war into the light. <laughs> the difference between Iran and Israel's capabilities on stark display, with reports that about half of the projectiles either failed on launch or crashed before reaching their targets. The vast majority of the rest were destroyed by Israel and its partners, including the U.S., France, Britain, Jordan and Saudi Arabia. The 99 percent interception rate described as a spectacular military achievement. Stunning video showed some missiles being shot down over Jerusalem. On Sunday, Israel's war cabinet met to decide how to respond. Benny Gantz said Israel will respond when the time is right. And Defense Minister Yoav Gallant urged an international coalition against Iran. After the attack, President Joe Biden and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu talked by phone. Biden reportedly told Netanyahu, you got to win, take a win, and urged him to carefully think through the consequences of any retaliation. He also said the U.S. won't participate in any strike against Iran. The president's been very clear. We don't seek a war with Iran. We're not looking for escalation here. We will continue to help Israel defend itself. Yet some U.S. lawmakers say the U.S. should support an Israeli retaliatory strike. I think a proportionate response here, I think one option would be to take out the facilities where these drones and rockets came from and also destroy the manufacturing facilities that build the drones and rockets. We need to stand with Israel. Uh, Israel's not at war with Hamas or Hezbollah or Yemen. Those are all surrogates for, uh, for Iran. Those are, they're prostitutes. The pimp is Iran. Israel is at war with Iran. Iran hates Americans. Iran hates Jews. Iran wants to kill Americans and Jews. Former Israeli ambassador to the UN and Knesset member Danny Danone told CBN News he believes a great defense is not enough. We have to show also our offensive capabilities in order to create deterrence in the region against Taiwan. They attacked a sovereign country uh, with 300 rockets, uh, missiles and UAVs, and we cannot sit idly by. And my position is that we have to hit them hard to teach them a lesson that they will not do it again. While the Israelis and their partners praise the air defense, some also point to the power of prayer in protecting the Jewish state. No, I want to thank all those who pray for us and stand with us. I think last night what we saw was uh, the hand of God protecting Israel as well. CBN's Chuck Holton shared how he hosted a live report on YouTube in the minutes after the attack started. As the rockets and drones were still flying toward Israel, uh, so before we knew what would actually take place, uh, we had 40,000 people online, I believe, and um, uh, we we prayed all together, 40,000 people. That's a stadium's worth of people. As we've prayed that God would thwart the plans of evil men, he came through last night and he answered our prayer. And that's a very significant thing that I think we can't forget. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Well, joining us now from Tel Aviv is Jonathan Konrikas. He's a former spokesman for the IDF and a senior fellow at the Foundation for Defense of, of Democracies. So uh, let's, let's talk about what President Biden is now urging Benjamin Netanyahu to do, to slow down and think through Israel's response. What should, is, what should be the main considerations in any response to this attack? Hello, good morning, thank you for having me. Uh, slowing down and thinking and uh, thinking things through is probably always good advice. And that I think shouldn't be confused with not responding and letting this uh, become somewhat of a norm. Uh, yesterday, the night before yesterday, this was a watershed moment in Middle Eastern history. Iran came out the shadows for the first time. 
did an unprecedented attack against Israel, an attack that, of course, must be met with equal or superior firepower from Israel. In my mind, there's no question about it. What really is important, in my mind, are a few things. One, what's the Israeli plan and what's the strategic objective that we want to achieve? Two, is to create the partnership and a coalition by which Israel won't be fighting Iran alone, but will have the at least passive support, if not active participation, of other countries in the region, Saudi Arabia, Iran, the Emirates, and other countries who already are aligned with the U.S. and Israel. And third, very importantly, to have U.S. support. I do not think that Israel wants a single U.S. soldier to be involved in that, airman or sailor. We don't want American soldiers to be in harm's way. But Israel definitely needs U.S. support, military and diplomatic, in order to take this battle back towards Iran and to really chart a new path for the Middle East after this tremendous aggression by Iran. Should one of the strategic goals be the elimination of Iran's nuclear capability? Uh, should that be first and foremost? Well, when we deal with Iran, there's uh, essentially two main issues that um, are a menace for the region and the world. One is Iran's regional capabilities to build proxy organizations like Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, and many other organizations that they have built and funded and equipped, armed over the years. All of them are around Israel and have been firing at Israel for the last half year. That's one issue. And the second issue, as you mentioned, their nuclear weapons program. When Israel goes ahead and retaliates against Iran, my hope is that it will be under a logic that aims either for their nuclear military capabilities or for their regional terrorist capabilities or for both. I think that both are very important targets that need to be taken out uh, by Israel. And again, it should be part of a strategic plan, not just a retaliation for the sake of retaliation, that isn't worth much, but really a strategic Israeli plan that has local, regional, and then global support, because Israel is used to fighting against evils of the world, and it's used to doing a lot of the heavy lifting, and I think we're happy to do it. We will just need support in order to really change the balance of the Middle East. Well, let's talk about another st strategic goal, which you've already mentioned, and it's that, that is regional cooperation. Uh, recognizing Iran is the major threat to peace in the Middle East. Uh, some view that the Hamas had a goal of stopping the Abraham Accords, and that was the intent in its timing of October 7th. I've heard some analysts say the main goal here from Iran is to show Jordan's hand, that if Jordan participated in the defense, uh, that that would now be an excuse to go in and attack Jordan and depose the king. Uh, what's your view? Yeah, the region is very important. And uh, myself and colleagues at the FDD, we've been speaking about the stability of the Hashemite kingdom of Jordan for quite a while. And we know that the modus operandi of the Iranians is to find... Um, social and ethnic and religious fault lines in countries, exasperate them and make situations worse, and then go in and destabilize countries. That's what they did in Syria. That is what they're doing in Lebanon. That's what they did in Gaza. And that's what they did in Yemen. By that logic, uh, Jordan is vulnerable to Iranian efforts and Iranian attacks. But Jordan so far has been very strong and resilient against these uh, attempts by Iran. Uh, Jordan is an important country. It's a U.S. ally. It is an Israeli ally. We have peace with Jordan. And uh, two nights ago, Jordan made a very clear decision to first and foremost defend its own airspace, not to allow a foreign country violate its airspace and threaten, possibly threaten its citizens and facilities. And it also did a good and smart thing because it fought on the right side. Um, I don't think that the primary objective of the Iranians was to expose Jordan, but I do think that the Iranian 
uh, puppeteers and terror masters have been eyeing Jordan for quite a while, and they're looking for social tensions to exasperate. Let, let's talk about Iranian intentions. Uh, you know, it, it seems like they wanted to respond to the attack on the embassy in, in Syria. You can debate whether it was an embassy or a military headquarters, uh, but uh, they had to do something. Do you think they actually intended to fail so that they could have a response, but then Israel wouldn't be justified in a counterattack? Yeah, that theory has been out on uh, X on Twitter and uh, many other places I've heard it floated, most of it by Iran supporters and people that are less friendly towards Israel. Uh, I personally don't think so, because uh, it's if, if that's a move, it's a silly move, and the Iranians are usually not silly people. They're cold, they are uh, very calculated, and they're strategic thinkers. You do not send 350 pieces of very advanced weaponry from about a thousand miles away in order to fail. That doesn't make sense. Uh, and they sent a lot, about 60 tons of explosives Israel's way. And uh, yeah, I think that they, they would assume that Israeli air defenses would be able to pick some of them out of the sky. I don't think that the Iranians thought that 99% of the incoming rockets and missiles would be intercepted. And I do not think that they wanted to uh, fail. If you listen to the statements made by the uh, president himself, the Iranian president, and by all of the military echelon and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, they were all talking about punishing Israel and inflicting a severe blow. Uh, those things don't compute. And I think that the Iranians are now uh, quite surprised by their failure. They're scrambling how to explain it to themselves, to the supporter. If you follow Iranian media, you'll see that there is strict censure over uh, voicing uh, opinions in Iran now of their lack of success. And they're trying to shove down Iranian throats, the, basically the population throats, that this was a good success and that all of the uh, uh, targets that were intended to be struck were indeed struck when, of course, even everyday Iranians know that this is very far from the case. And the Iranians themselves are quite ridiculing the regime, the Quds Force, and their very poor performance. Well, Iranian media is actually showing uh, B-roll from California wildfires and, and claiming that's what's going on in Israel today as a result of the attack. So it, it is kind of comical. If, if they really did intend to hurt Israel and the complete failure of the attack, what does that say about their military capability? Would they ever be able to launch any serious attack against Israel? Yeah, I wouldn't want us to uh, sit here and wait for them to have the ability to get their act together. Uh, I think that Israel should, uh, you know, take smart and swift and powerful measures, A, to make sure that this never happens again, and to send a very strong message to Iran that this is totally not uh, tolerable. And second, as I said in the beginning, this should be a part of a bigger strategic plan to fold back Iranian regional terror activities and threatening of Israeli civilians. Because, you know, when we think of it, you've been reporting on it as well on the show, for the better part of six months, Israelis have been under direct fire from Iranian proxies. Hamas, Hezbollah, Islamic Jihad, and Syrian proxies, and the Houthis have been firing at Israel. And all of these are Iranian proxies funded and armed by Iran. So I think it is about high time that Israel changes its strategy towards Iran and brings business into Iran in retaliation for them supporting terror, but also in retaliation for their blatant attack on Israeli sovereignty. Let's turn our attention to Gaza, because the world's attention now is, is far from it. But what, what's going to happen now with the planned invasion of Rafa? Well, um, that is a very good question and one that uh, Israeli decision makers really have to answer to. I know that the Israeli public is very eager for this as well. Uh, we have unfinished business in Gaza. Hamas still stands and exists, which is it must not be allowed to. And uh, Rafah has still not been visited by Israeli troops by and large. Um, I know that the prime minister said that the date has been set. I have not yet seen that date. 
and uh, there are conflicting uh, reports about whether that is true or not. What I know is military reality. Israel has to go into Rafah. It has to dismantle the tunnels where all of the weapons come into Gaza from, and it has to defeat Hamas so that we can start rebuilding the Gaza Strip. My hope is that Israel will be able to, through statecraft and diplomacy, connect between these two topics, because they are connected. The connecting line is Iran in this aspect, and connect between these two topics and really start uh, to launch the very much needed offensive on Hamas in Rafah as a reminder that October 7 is very much connected to Iran, but now have more international support and, most importantly, U.S. support to do so. Well, Jonathan, thank you so much for your insights, and be assured we stand with you. And we're praying for the, for the leadership of Israel. We're praying that they would have unusual wisdom in these times and that all of Israel would have unusual unity. You need it now more than ever. We stand with you. Thank you, sir. Yes, we do.